Hey, is this real? I can't tell. Alright, so now I'm going to do my uh, top five actors. Uh, number five, I have Samuel L. Jackson. Um, and, you know, you could argue that, I mean, he only really plays one kind of role, which I would say is true, but he's uh, done some of my, been in some of my favorite movies and, uh, and been in some of my favorite roles ever. You know, even though I, I don't like the original Star Wars trilogy, I liked... Uh, you know, him playing as Mace Windu in those movies. Uh, and he's just, uh, more so, I think he's more of a, a great comedy actor, just because of how much of a hard ass he plays, you know. Snakes on a Plane is a great movie to laugh at. Uh, Pulp Fiction is one of those cult classic movies that everybody knows about. And, um, you know, he's been, his, some of his more recent things, he's been playing uh, Nick Fury in all of the, uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I mean, and um, I mean he's just one. Of, he's one of the bigger names out right now in terms of, you know, acting. Um, he and I just I just like him. I just think he's, he's he just does a good job and everything like that. So uh, number four, I have uh, Brian Cranston. You know, you probably know him either from Malcolm in the Middle or Breaking Bad or more recently with a somewhat minor role in in the most recent Godzilla movie. But Brian Cranston is a phenomenal actor. Uh, Breaking Bad is a really good TV show. I'm starting to kind of get into it. I hear, you know, of course, the most series, you know, it gets better as the, as the series goes on. And I'm only on like the on like the first or second season. But he is just does a great job playing, uh, you know, a character who is almost in a way has nothing left to lose. So he kind of you know, turns down a dark path. And in Godzilla, I thought his performance in Godzilla was amazing in terms of the, the emotion and the depth he added to the character. It's one of the highlights of the movies because uh, looking back, the movie kind of is meh. But his performance in that movie is uh, absolutely phenomenal. Number three, I have uh, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman is... He's, he's one of those cool... I guess he's... I guess he's British. I'm not sure. He, I know he's... I think he's British. I could be wrong about that. Don't don't kill me for that. But, like, he's been in a lot of uh, great movies. You know, Who? Alan Rickman. He played uh, Professor Snape in Harry Potter movies. The bad guy in uh, Die Hard. I don't know if he's British or not. Yeah, I don't know. He's an English. English, 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 English motherfucker, British. do you speak it? Back to Samuel Jackson. But, um... Yeah, like I said, he was in Die Hard, which he did a, a really good job playing a... Uh, like a Russian uh, bank heist, I guess, thief. I'm not sure what the technical word is for that. Um, you know, he was in Galaxy Quest, where he plays an actor playing a character on a Star Trek-esque TV show. And then again, uh, more recently, and it kind of my first experience through him was, you know, he played Professor Snape in uh, all eight Harry Potter films. So, um... And he's just a great actor. I mean, another guy who kind of plays the same kind of roles over and over and over again, but he just... He's just great. His dulcet tones are recognizable. He is probably, in my opinion, the most recognizable voice in Hollywood. Number two. I have Michael Caine. I, and I know, I, I know this one's British. I know he is. Michael Caine is just awesome. Uh... You know, some of the movies that I remember him being in, of course, you know, as a lot of people know, he played uh, Alfred Pennyworth in, a, in the most re in Christopher Nolan's Batman series and did a phenomenal job there. He was, I think he's probably one of the, probably the best pick for an Alfred, just because he's a slight, slight bit sarcastic in a great role. Uh, he was in, uh, uh, what was that movie about the magicians with uh, Woody Harrelson? Now you see me. Yeah, that's what it is. Now you see me. That's what it is. He, he's in that movie, which he 
that movie wasn't that good, but he did, uh, but he kind of was the, one of the highlights of it, and then, um, he's also in, this is, I think, where he kind of shines, and it's weird, he does a really, really good job in The Muppets, uh, The Christmas Carol, he does, uh, a phenomenal job as Ebenezer Scrooge. I think th that's honestly my favorite thing he's done, just because um, he plays that character so well. And yes, it's Muppets, it's supposed to be a little bit lighthearted, but I think he is uh, just a great person to play Ebenezer Scrooge. Alright, and then number one, uh, I have Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins is my, is probably my favorite, uh, is, is my favorite actor ever. I mean, he has easily one of the most recognizable roles ever as playing Hannibal Lecter in uh, what was it? Red, Red Dragon, Silence of the Lambs, and then Hannibal. He In all those movies, he played Hannibal Lecter, which is probably what he's most known for. He was in the, the I think it was 2009, 2010, The Wolfman remake, where he played like a villain. And then he, all, he, play, he also he plays Odin in all the Thor movies, but he's just, um, he's a great classically trained actor, like, he started off playing in, uh, in, uh, you know, in theater, but, I mean, and honestly, the main reason why he's on this list is because of his work in, in Silence of the Lambs, his portrayal of the, uh, evil genius Hannibal Lecter is just, absolutely amazing. It's it's one of the most chilling performances I've ever seen by an actor ever. The fact that he can kind of put so much depth into a character whom basically uh, has to act within the confines of a, of a jail cell throughout almost the entirety of the film. So, um, and that, that, you know, that, that just takes talent. So, I mean, yeah, those are uh, my top five. Uh, favorite actors ever. Hey, what's up? It's Luke here. My uh, list of top five actors. Starting at the bottom, number five. Peyton Manning. Of course. The more Omaha. No, uh, my number five is Robin Williams. And not just because, you know, he recently passed away. <clears throat> but because he was such a brilliant actor. And really a very uh, multifaceted actor. He could do comedy, drama, you know. He, he, had, he could play the field and play any role you put him into. Um, number four, I have Morgan Freeman. You know, because if you ever need anything explained in a movie, all you gotta do is have Morgan Freeman. And anytime he comes in and explains something, he gains a freckle. Number three... I have, is it Sir Anthony Hopkins, or is, is Anthony Hopkins knighted? No, but no. Like he's not medieval times. <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever. I have Anthony Hopkins as my number three. Uh, really just because of his ability to play the villain well. Uh, everybody knows Hannibal. That, you know, that's probably Anthony Hopkins most significant role, but he has always been able to play a messed up villainous character very well. Number two, I have Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry, that whole, the whole Magnum series. Uh, Dirty Richard. Dirty Richard. Uh, Do you feel he was He was knighted by Anthony Queen Hopkins Elizabeth was knighted? II. So it was Sir Anthony Hopkins. Uh, Alright. Anyway, Clint Eastwood. Uh, you know, Heartbreak Ridge, Kelly's Heroes, uh, yeah, Torino. Torino. He, yeah, he's not just a brilliant actor, he's a brilliant writer, a brilliant director. Uh, just a very talented dude. And my number one, if anyone knows me, he's probably not surprised by this, I have Mark Hamill. Uh, probably most well known for portraying Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars movies, both episodes 4, 5, and 6, and apparently at least episode 7. Because apparently they got all the original cast back for it. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, but not just because he's one of the stars of my, one of my favorite movies of all time. He's also the voice of the Joker. And about ten other animated characters. Well, you can be someone as well known as Luke Skywalker. And then 
be all these other characters and not have it known that you're the same actor, that's talent, in my opinion. So, there's my top five actors. Check out the other guys' videos. <laughs> uh, Keith and Sam both did theirs. I don't know, Tyler, did you do one? No, this no. is all one video. Oh, this is all one video? Uh, you blew it. I did blow it. Shit. So, yo, uh, my five favorite actors. I have one actress on this list. Uh, I did this list before, and I wanted to remake it because I forgot like a handful of people, and I don't know how I could forget them. Uh, two people I forgot. The first one I'll get into. Uh, one of my favorite actors of all time is Jim Carrey. And I don't know how I forgot him. Uh, growing up, some of my favorite movies were Ace Ventura, the Ace Ventura movies, and kids just don't have those type of movies anymore. I never see like those type of movies that have impact on kids, like. A lot of kids nowadays, they look like Disney cartoons, or not cartoons, but like animated movies, you know, and I don't know, I feel like it's just not the movies like Ace Ventura that are just wacky and stupid like that, that, you know, I don't see like that same impact, and I always feel like that was like, not to be one of those 80s, but like a 90s movie, or whatever, like, you know you grew up in the 90s when you watched like Ace Ventura, I know how stupid that sounds, it, um, that's something you see on like Facebook or whatever, but Ace Ventura were some of my favorite movies. Uh, Eternal Sunshine, uh, even even a movie like Yes Man that just wasn't that great. But Jim Carrey kind of made it fun. And I know he's all like you know a wacky guy and he's a funny guy, but like Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind, that movie is more serious, <clears throat> and he can take on more serious roles and. You know, he, he, he's one of the very few um, people that act that can, you know, like, I know, I, I know Robin Williams, uh, maybe Will Smith, if you still count, like, Fresh Prince, uh, because he was funny then, and since he's since then he's been more serious. And Men in Black was a little bit goofy. But Jim Carrey is one of those, like, elite people that can be funny and can be serious, and <clears throat> can be pretty good actors, and I've always liked a lot of his movies. He's very weird. Even when he played the, the Riddler for Batman, he's he's very multi-dimensional. The next guy I have on my list, another person that I forgot, was um, Matt Damon. Yeah, uh, I was looking down my list here. I thought I forgot to put him on again, but Matt Damon is one of my favorite actors. Uh, good Will Hunting is, is a very good movie. Um, when you think about it, it's kind of weird. Uh, Matt Damon's in a couple of movies like Good Will Hunting, uh, all the Bourne movies, and Saving Private Ryan, all movies where he plays the title character. Uh, so the movie's named after him, or he's named after the movie, or some sort like that. I noticed that. <clears throat> Good Will Hunting, uh, he plays just a young kid that's super smart, that, you know, is a kid from like, uh, you know, like a... a not like a bad neighborhood, like a bad neighborhood for like white people. It's not like, you know, like a really bad neighborhood, but just, you know, uh, like a, a a poor Boston neighborhood. And, he, you know, he's a defensive guy and, you know, just, just the role that he plays, he kind of sucks you in and you don't really think, all right, that guy's really good at acting. You really feel like he's some, you know, like that's the person he is. And it's sometimes not a movie. You kind of, you kind of lose a little bit. <clears throat> And some of the Bourne movies, where, yeah, they're more action movies, and they're, uh, you know, guy movies or whatever, you know, with shooting and all that stuff, you know. I'm sure women out there like those movies, too, but they're always, you know, society, they're like, oh, guy movies or whatever, just because they're action, they have killing and stuff, but, I don't know, anyone can like those kind of movies. But, in the Bourne movies, they're just, they're just fun, because I'm a, I'm a guy that could be a fan of, like, you know, some... I don't want to say cheesy, but Liam Neeson movies, like Taken, you know, the Taken movies, where it's like, you can kind of make fun of them and laugh at them sometimes, but there's action, and he's such a badass, where Jason Bourne is such a badass, and I like James Bond, some of those movies, they're not like my favorite movies, but I can get into those movies, and I feel like I like the Bourne movies a lot more because of Matt Damon being Jason Bourne, uh, you know, Saving Private Ryan, a great movie is Tom Hanks. Uh, Adam Goldberg gets, you know, stabbed and it's hard to watch. <laughs> but uh, 
Because I always think of him as Eddie from Friends. I, I don't know why. I think of him as Eddie from Friends first before I think of him in um, in uh, Saving Private Ryan, Adam Goldberg, not Matt Damon. Uh, you know, he's excellent in a lot of these movies. Even you know, We Bought a Zoo, which is just a, not, like, not the greatest movie in the world, but... You know, those, those are movies like, like Jim Carrey with Yes Man. They're not like the greatest movies ever. It's not like, you know, the greatest performance. It's not, you know, super funny. It's not like super thrilling. It, it's, it's not like these great, you know, performances that make you feel something. Or, you know, it's not like, oh, that's the greatest acting ever. But even on their, even while they're not on their best day and they're not their best movies and just sappy feel-good movies they're still they're still pretty good and i still like them in the, the movies is that is one thing that, that adds to them being some of my favorite people that act next i have will smith he was on my list last time um like i said about will smith he can be funny he can be serious like he was in the men in black movies uh he really started out uh fresh prince of bel-air he's pretty funny in those in in, in that show um and uh, I remember one instance, one episode, uh, I, forget the, I forget the name of the episode, but uh, it, it was it was about Will's dad coming to visit him or whatever because he hasn't he hadn't seen his dad in, in so long or whatever, uh, you know, and his dad came to visit him and they, they were on the best terms. And, uh, <clears throat> and it ended up being one of the best television scenes ever, Will getting mad and yelling and you know, very emotional, and uh, you can hear some people in the audience crying, or the audience is silent because it's just, you know, it's a moment. And even another moment when um, Will, Will was shot and Carlton went out and bought a gun, and, you know, it's just seen in, in the TV show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, that it's a comedy, it's a sitcom TV show, he can still be funny and be such a good actor. And then you have, uh, like, Men in Black, where it's just, it's, they're just fun movies. Uh, you have I Am Legend, where it's more serious, it's more intense. Um, you know, very multi-dimensional, very believable in a lot of movies. Like, I Am Legend really got me. It, it brought me into the movie, and I, I lost myself a lot in that movie. In some parts where it's kind of scary, some parts it's just, you know, great acting. Some parts are just kind of funny. He, he always adds a bit, of, a bit of humor. Where A guy like Jim Carrey, is, he can be, you know very funny and then serious. I think uh, Will Smith can be very serious and then sometimes he can be pretty funny in, in a serious movie, you know, like uh, like I Don't Legend. He has a couple of funny lines. He pulls it off so well. Uh, the fourth person I have on my list is uh, someone that I didn't really expect to have on this, this list. I had him on my last list, but it's kind of weird saying it, but Paul Rudd is one of my favorite actors or people that act. Not because they have super great performances that are very intense or very gripping, very, you know, like, oh, that's, you know, Meryl Streep or Will Smith or whatever, or Leo DiCaprio. He, he barely missed my list. I love I loved Leo in um, The Great Gatsby. That's such a great movie. Um, but this is about Paul Rudd. Uh, he's in a lot of movies. His general role is just being a regular dude in movies, and a movie like I Love You Man, where he's just a regular guy, kind of a weenie in some ways, but he plays that part where <clears throat> he's kind of sarcastic sometimes, he's kind of just a normal guy and funny stuff happens to him, and uh, he played Mike uh, on Friends, that was probably one of the first roles I've ever seen him in, uh, the TV show Friends. He's just pretty funny. He's, I don't know what it is about him. He's not overly funny. He's not like, you know, guys like Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen has his voice, you know, it makes him a lot funnier. Uh, cause people just hear him say whatever, you know, in his voice and it's just kind of funny. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, like weed stuff. That's the kind of humor and, and just, uh, outrageous stuff. But Paul Rudd is not like outrageous stuff or just, completely unbelievable, you know, getting chased by drug dealers, like, or whatever, uh, he's just, he has that it factor about him that I just like watching the movies that he's in, like, this is 40, I know, uh, I was reading up on that movie a little bit, and I know a lot of 
I read that uh, it's kind of split 50-50. Some critics saw it as like, yeah, this is, a, this is a pretty good movie. And other critics saw it as like, eh, it's just long and there's some dull parts. But I remember watching that movie, this is 40, and just enjoying his performance the entire way through. And I felt like there wasn't downtime. That's how you know you, you enjoy someone's acting so much. When there isn't downtime and you, and you just like watching them, every scene that gets to them, you're just like, all right, yeah, this is cool. And, um, like, uh, Leslie Mann, I think she played, yeah, she played Paul Rudd's wife in This Is For You. And every scene with her, like, no offense to her, I was just, I was waiting for Paul Rudd's scene again, just because it's always something funny, and it's always a, you know, that uh, attention drawer in a movie. And I just like how, you know, he's not funny, but he's funny. You know, he's just a normal guy, and somehow it, he, he just works in movies. And he's one of my favorite uh, guys to watch in, in any movie. Even even in Friends, I like him in Friends. Uh, the last person I have, uh, one of my top five all-time favorite people that act. My last one is probably definitely my favorite female, and she's the only female I have on this list. Uh... I, I, I could definitely make a case for her being my favorite person that acts would be Ellen Page. Juno is my favorite movie of all time. Uh, in similar ways, she's more of like that teenager role, you know, sarcastic, uh, young, feisty, whatever. Uh, but it, it, she plays roles in, she takes roles in movies that, in a couple of movies are it's very real, you know, it's very like, uh, very angsty roles, um, but it's, it's, it's a sense that you can kind of connect with those characters a little bit more, like the Paul Rudds and Ellen Pages. Um, Ellen Page is, is just a funny person, uh, she, she, she was also in, um, Inception, you know, she can, another, you know, um, a person that acts that is multi-dimensional. You know, she can be funny, she can be... Like in Juno, there are multiple uh, feelings in that movie, multiple emotions. Some parts were funny, some parts were kind of sad, some parts were, you know, made you sort of <clears throat> angry. Not like, I actually got angry, but it's like, you know, like oh, what the hell, or whatever. Uh, you know, you can, you can shift around what you're feeling so much. <clears throat> and just a single movie, and Juno is my favorite movie of all time. Uh, but also Inception. She, in in Inception, she's a, she's a good actress. You know, it, it's not funny. It, it, it's more of kind of kind of an a, a more actiony movie, more thinky movie. You know, she just fits into roles so well. And every as a, as is everyone on my list here. Uh, but yeah, she's definitely she just has that thing that's hard to describe for some people, but just that it factor that you like watching their movies, okay. even if the movies like aren't that great, or you know, it's not the greatest movie you've ever seen, uh, like Inception, was it made me think a little bit, and it's like, it's not like I hate thinking, but it's just some parts I had to watch it over a couple times, it's not like instantly, like that's my favorite movie, but it wasn't a bad movie, it's a good movie, but you know, uh, you always just like watching their movies, and you see they're in a movie, you're like, oh, I'm excited, I want to watch that. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, these five people are definitely five of the favorite people I like to watch act. And um, a couple of people that missed my list is Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> uh, I thought about putting Tom Hanks in there, but I wasn't quite sure. I like him, but in, in some ways he plays similar roles in a lot of movies that... I mean, everyone kind of does, uh, but yeah, Tim Allen sucks. Um, I thought about putting Ben Stiller. Uh, I like Ben Stiller. He's really grown on me. I used to hate Ben Stiller, and that sounds very bad to hate someone that you don't even know, but I just never thought he was funny. I thought I hated his freaking hair, and, you know, I just never liked his cockiness, but he's grown on me a lot. Um... But Leo DiCaprio, uh, like someone else here. Angelina Jolie is actually a pretty good actress. Like, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, she's just hot or whatever, but she's actually a pretty good actress. Um, no, yeah, I mean, you have my five favorite ones. So.
So uh, that's the that's the video. That's that's that. That's my part.